Hey guys, um, so here we are. We're gonna start making these tuna balls now. Honestly, that's all you need right here is uh, the chunk tuna and oil. Sorry, my camera angle's kind of weird, so I have to look. Um, I'm doing this at my gaming slash editing desk because I didn't have any other lighting. So here we are. Um, yeah, just the chunk Starkist tuna and oil. Um, I'm going to use the uh, two cans. You got spawn sack, netting right here. This stuff, this is orange. You can use pink or white or. Uh, you probably use chartreuse and get away with it. This is just a uh, magic thread or a stretchy string right here. Um, pretty, pretty basic stuff. But where the magic comes in with these ones is I got some bloody tuna powder. I got some Northwest Bait and Scent Graybill's Herring Formula and Sand Trent. Um, these are great right here. I only have a little bit of herring oil left. Man, this is a tough camera. There it is. Um, I only have a little bit of herring oil left, so I'm going to use what I have. But that's been killing it. And then what I put in the jar every time, if I can, if I have it, is the Potsky's Nectar. Um, gives it something good to soak in. Gives it that egg scent. This is from cooking their eggs in the factory. Probably just going to finish off this bottle right here. So that's step one. I start getting all this stuff ready. I'll uh, pour in some sand shrimp oil here. More than you think. So you really get a good scent trail. I'm going to finish off this herring oil in here. And I think where I've been fishing lately, which is a really coastal tidal little stream for the Chinook that's been kind of a secret I think is having that fleshy fish scent the tuna and the uh, the herring really oily scents um, I think that goes a long way in uh, catching these fish so I'm going to set this aside for now um, I have a few other things I'm going to add I'm going to add some krill powder and some sulfite there's my sulfite there's my krill powder I'm going to exchange this bloody tuna. This is a little old. This is newer. don't think it really makes a difference because I've cured eggs in like two or three year old tuna powder and caught fish. Bloody tuna powder. So let's get all this set aside. Now I'm going to take some scissors and uh, I'm just going to start cutting up some of these uh, spawn sacks. I'm going to do... Where can you see my hands here? Right here? Okay. I take off sometimes big things of it and then a couple rolls back because I like to make different sizes depending on what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna go right here. My scissors are a little wet, so it's gonna be interesting. There's no real science to it. Um, yeah, I see guys being super meticulous about making these cuts super straight. Super even, same exact size, or they buy the pre-cut ones because they're the same exact size. You're just gonna fill them with some meat and catch fish on them. It's not. It's not rocket science. Anyone can do this. All right, I cut a few there. I'm gonna cut a few more, and I'll see you guys back in just a second. Straight. All right, so I got some of these cut up here. You can see just a big wad of them. Um, I'm gonna open up my uh, tuna now, the uh, the old tuna and oil. It's gotta be an oil, guys. One, the oil I think holds the scent of the fish better and doesn't. I don't know if they like don't like the stuff in water. I don't know. I've always used in oil, and I've always been told in oil is the best. Um, I don't think you gotta have the most expensive, freshest. You don't have to go to the docks and get the fresh tuna and cut it up yourself. I don't think that really matters. It's all tuna. Um, you know, tuna belly is nice to have too when you're doing the when you're doing alternative to egg baits. Um, I just dump that straight in there. Throw the can in the garbage. Get the other can out. Um, 
But honestly, I mean, I've caught fish on these a lot. I've been doing them a lot more this year. I used to, I never used to run them by themselves, really. I've always ran them with my eggs or, like, you know, and sand shrimp together, all three. And you can see how oily that is. I mean, that's, that right there helps, you know, all your scents and everything that you buy in the store, all, the, all your oils. I mean, it's the oil that carries the scent. It helps it disperse better through the water. It's viscous. Always have a lot of paper towels on hand. Um, I would normally use gloves doing bait, except I have the eight millimeter, uh, you know, the Nick pop off orange gloves, and they like to sometimes sit off the end of my finger a little bit. When you're doing the stretchy string, it'll grab your finger a little bit. So, all right, I got the tuna in there. Now I'm gonna get my little magic uh, spoon here, and I'm gonna start with bloody tuna powder. This I don't really measure. I just give it a good. A good whack. You want plenty of this in there. This is a really good little secret of mine with my eggs is, you know, if anyone knows me, they know I catch a lot of fish on eggs, is I put this in every single keyer no matter where I'm fishing. And that some people say, whoops, some people say you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that, you know, you have some with it, some with it, some without. I don't buy that. I like mine with bloody tuna powder. Up river, down river, on the coast, inland, no matter where I'm fishing. I think it helps some days trigger bites, and I don't think it bothers the fish at all. So that's just me. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. I like to see it in there. I like to use don't even like to use the that side. I like to I like to see it in there. I like to turn it that fleshy yellow color almost. So one more ingredient I'm gonna have to go grab here in a second, and I'll show you what that is. And especially for coastal fish and or coho even upriver I'll show you what that is in a minute so this is krill powder we've all seen it this is the Potsky firepower I mean I guess you could use procure or whatever get a good amount of that in there um, I'm just gonna put the sulfide in now so this, I'm going to do, for two cans, I'm going to do one, two, and a half. Two and a half uh, teaspoons. Or no, excuse me. Yeah. Get that mixed in there. Sulfite's good for Chinook, upriver or downriver. Um, it's especially important upriver when those fish are starting to crave salt again, I think. That's the working theory. That and Chinook especially are chemical junkies. They love chemicals. I don't know what it is. They love their sulfites and their nitrites and all that stuff. It's weird. I, everyone thinks that's just a preservative. I beg to differ. I'm pretty sure it's a bite stimulant. I'm going to squeeze some of this uh, super gel in there. It's shrimp krill. Um, not super important, but I used it last time. Last two times, I got bit really well. I use it, just a chunk of it here until it comes off. It can be a lot. It can be a little. It's shrimp krill. It can't hurt. Um, it's mostly the shrimp scent because I have a bunch of krill powder in there. And then just on top of the bait itself, I'm going to add a little extra of the sand shrimp that I have. A little more oil in there. And I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab the sugar. All right, I'm back. Got the sugar. Uh, let's see. A little bit more sugar than I do sulfite. Just a little bit. And this is just plain granulated white sugar. It's not any kind of special sugar. Um, I do like liquid cane sugar for this kind of stuff. I just don't have any. It's fine. This works. This is what I usually use. But when I have liquid cane sugar, I like using it for curing stuff. And I'm just going to get this all combined good so everything's even. I mean, one crazy thing is it's all going to go inside that jar. So there is a little bit of redundancy built into this. I mean, I could just all put the stuff in the tuna. I could just put the tuna in the netting. And put everything in the jar and shake it and it'd probably do the same thing i just like 
making sure it all gets incorporated to have more confidence in it. And if I have more confidence in it, it's going to catch more fish. I know that sounds weird, but when I have confidence in something, I seem to fish it harder and better, and I catch more fish. Um, fork up here. Okay, so here's my jar I'm going to be storing everything in. I like to take my lid right here that I have on this. This is just one of those, uh, what is it? The Talenti ice cream things my wife really likes. And uh, this one was chocolate chip cookie dough. And she graciously let me have the leftover jar and none of the ice cream. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take one of my squares here. This is a relatively smaller one, so I'm not going to do too much. I like to use this half. Hopefully it will focus. This half a teaspoon. For a smaller one like this, I will scoop something like that and kind of pack it down for a smaller one. And then add about that much. Let me grab the sides. And I, the one of the reasons I like to use this cup, or this lid as a cup, kind of, too, is it makes less mess. And I can squeeze, that oil's gonna squeeze out when you tighten this. It's just gonna happen, and you don't wanna leave that oil behind. And I should have had more paper towels ready to dry my hands off, but. Then you're gonna take your magic thread, stretchy string, whatever you wanna call it, and you're gonna do, I usually just count to 20 in my head you're gonna do quite a few wraps and you see a lot of guys when they make spawn sacks and stuff this is where you're just basically making spawn sacks guys if you've made spawn sacks before you've done this some people like to half hitch it i'm not really i don't think it really matters i like to pull tight a few times before and then snap it off i've never had that stretchy string come loose ever ever not one time so normally i do this next part into the garbage can take this I'm going to leave about that much, about that much, uh, tag end on there. I do that because I run my hooks through that and then pull the egg loop up and around. So I don't come through the body of this and then when I'm done, I just dunk that right in there. Um, I'm probably going to put this on time lapse or something and I'm going to make a bunch of these. So, um, I'm gonna fill the fill or as many of these as I got and you can save this mixture if you run out of like I don't think I'm gonna have enough uh, of the nylon oh this stuff right here when you get more of it after a few you just dump that into the jar that one didn't have very much in it but you dump all the excess oil back into your jar you want all that tuna and all the other scent wrapped up in there and you want it sitting in there all day while you fish and Sometimes I'll even take tuna balls if the fishing's a little slow and I don't want to go through a bunch of tuna balls, like, you know, don't want to waste them. Fishing's a little slow, I'll stop and just kind of dunk. I got a fish the other day doing this. It was a little slow, about a week ago. And I just took one of them, I dunked it back in and caught a fish on it two casts later. I got more scent into there. I'm actually going to take a little bit more krill powder and dump it in the bottle. Just like that. But anyways, I was saying you could save this. Or you could just do what I do. And you can dump the excess into the jar, and you have even more of this in there, that scent in there, and it lasts all day. And if you keep your bait cold, which I usually don't because I'm an idiot, but if you keep your bait cold, you can, um, I like to give it a little stir every time I do this, but, uh, you don't have to, I don't think. This one's a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go a little bit bigger goop. Bring it up to the sides. great thing about this is it's really forgiving really if as long as you get all the sides up and twist good you're not going to really mess it up too bad i like to try to form mine a little bit keep that bottom rounded out as much as possible paper towel always handy to dry your hands off in between doing this and the stretchy string keep your scissors off to the side don't be an idiot grab along start wrapping i like to leave it a little bit loose on my first few wraps and then i tighten down as i go let it get tight on its own. You'll start to feel that pressure. And sometimes I'll loosen up and start again if I think it needs it. You can go, you can cheat a little bit onto the tuna ball itself. Just, I just got it in my face. Just to make sure that it gets wrapped. To make sure there's no openings. You don't always have to do that, but that was a 
that was a bigger ball there so then again you just cut that off I normally do this straight into the garbage can but leave a little tag in there and you're good so anyways I'm probably gonna time lapse this and uh, I'll see you at the end to show you the finished product in the jar and ready to go a lot of tuna here i'm going to put some of this in this jar after i make this last one but i have so much here because i only had so much spawn netting with me today um that i'm gonna to have to uh i'm gonna end up having to save some of it to make some for later um it'll keep in the fridge it's just canned tuna um just seal it tight so your wife you know or significant other doesn't complain there um all right so this see some of this in here always make sure that gets back in the jar Always, that's key. Let's make this last one here. Messy operation, as you can see. I like to stir this around, get up some of this oil from down here up here. Good size one. Gather it all together. Make sure you have all the corners. Sometimes it gets a little messier than you want. So I might have messed up a little bit on that one. Nope, no, we're good. Okay, I think. Oh, yeah, we're good. It's all in there. So it's not like spawn sacks. These you want it to get nice and tight. So you want more of a ball for sure. Tight enough even when all that oil comes out because it's all going to go right back in here in a minute. Um, this one I'm going to cheat a little bit and go onto the actual ball itself just to gather that top end just a little bit just to make sure I got it all surrounded by the netting a bunch of wraps start tightening down and pull off cut my tag end off and put it in the jar swirl that around a little bit make sure all this gets in there so I'm going to take some of this this is all good stuff right here, especially the oils in there, but all of it. It gets a little messy in that jar, but that's a good thing. You want all that extra tuna and oil and krill powder and everything. You want that mixed up in there. I'm not going to use the fork for that to stir it up because I don't want to poke holes, but I'll probably add a little bit more even. I like it just to coat and surround all the netting, just be kind of a big, almost bloody looking mess. Almost looks like jam, curse jam, I guess. But then I'm just going to... Take a little more of that. I might just dump the whole thing in there. It's not going to hurt nothing. Dump all that in there. Because then you can... I actually will take some of this stuff out when I have egg containers with me. Like containers for eggs. that have multiple compartments. And I'll take some of that stuff out and just kind of swirl it around in some of the eggs. You don't want to leave it in there with the eggs too... Like too many baits. Like all your baits. One, you want different scents if you're trying to go for that. And two, you want... Um, you don't want the egg sitting in oil too long. It will definitely degrade your egg and make them less. It'll make them less fishable. Probably really fishy, but less fishable. You won't get very many casts. And this coastal area, we're dealing with a lot of these little like piling perch and uh, sculpin stuff like that that like to eat your bait off your hook. Another reason why anything in a spawn sack does really good there because you bait is staying in front of fish longer. Gives a little swirl. there yeah see it's a messy operation um i've got fish in the smoker i have to go tend and uh let's see if i can get myself on camera here there we go i'm pretty sure you can see me there um i got fish in the smoker i gotta go tend and then uh i'm gonna shower uh so my wife will let me sleep in the same house um get the smell out of the house open up some windows and uh blast the air conditioning to filter the air Maybe light a candle or something. Um, she's gone right now at a friend's house. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, anyone can do this and it catches fish. It's really good to add with your eggs. 
Don't mind my giant son running through the house who's the size of a 10-year-old at 6. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so there it is in an ice cream container. This will catch you fish. All my fish I've caught this year, including those last couple you saw in that last video, almost all of them have come on that or a spinner, and one came on eggs because I didn't have very many eggs. But usually when I fish eggs at this particular spot, my eggs are dialed in. I'm going to bring a few baits with me tomorrow when I go. So, yeah, that's it. Go catch some fish on some tuna balls.